question is a thin 20 cm by 20 cm flat plate is pulled at 1 meter per second horizontally through a 3.6 mm thick oil layer sandwiched between two plates one stationary and other moving at a constant velocity of 0.3 meter per second the dynamic viscosity of oil is 0.027 pascal seconds assuming the velocity in each oil layer to vary linearly plot the velocity profile and find the location where the oil velocity is zero and second determine the force that needs to be applied on the plate to maintain this motion this is the question so diagram sometimes it is provided in this case diagram is provided this is plate and this one is fixed wall and this one is moving wall in between these two wall this is the fluid uh, having viscosity viscosity is 0.027 pascal seconds and in between these two walls this is the plate which is moving with certain velocity that is 1 meter per second velocity and this is the distance on top side uh, from the fixed wall the distance is 1 mm and from the moving wall the distance is 2.6 mm this uh, bottom plate is moving in this direction and this middle plate is moving the towards the right direction so bottom plate has having velocity 0.3 meter per second and this middle plate having the velocity 1 meter per second we have to plot the velocity profile and uh, you can see in the question it is clearly uh, written that the velocity in each oil layer is uh, is varying linearly okay so that means the velocity profile is linear profile so at this point at this point if i draw the velocity which is at 2 me 1 meter per second by indicating this arrow then at this section at this point the velocity is zero because it is a fixed wall then this velocity profile is linear so velocity goes on increasing from the fixed wall up to this plate okay and uh, towards the bottom plate we can see the velocity it is in toward the left and that value is 0.3 so let us consider this arrow indicates 0.3 velocity 0.3 meter per second velocity so the velocity change between these two plates is like this that means whatever the fluid particles are there in this region in this region they try to move towards the right and whatever the fluid particles are there in this region near to this moving wall this try to move toward the left so at certain point the fluid layer almost has zero velocity we want to find out this location this is the question so first question is we have to plot this velocity profile so this is the answer of that uh, we have plotted the velocity profile and we have to find out the location of this point where the idle velocity is zero okay so let us consider this distance is x distance and we want to find out what is this x distance so for that i have drawn another diagram you can see this same thing is there so i have indicated this diagrams uh, so remember this triangle this uh, line indicate velocity profile this line indicates velocity profile so the velocity profiles are like this so this is my velocity profile and we want to find out this distance x okay so i have named these points as a b c d and e if uh, the distance c e is x then the distance a to c is 2.6 minus x mm right now let's try to find out this so uh, we can see this uh, triangle a b c and triangle c d e is equilateral triangles so we can apply the rules like a b a to b divided by d to e a b means this a b divided by d to e that is equal to a to c divided by c to e now we can put the values so a to b uh, we know the velocity it is 1 meter per second then d to e the velocity is 0 0.3 meter per second then a to c a to c the distance is 2.6 mm minus x it is in terms of mm and distance c to e is x so we try to solve this so x that is equal to 0 0.3 into 2.6 minus x so this one is 1.3 x that is equal to 0 0.78 that means x is 0 0.6 mm remember this is the distance from moving wall or moving plate 
So at a distance of 0.6 mm from the moving plate, the velocity is oil velocity is zero. So this is the answer of first question. Now let's try to solve the second question. Let us determine the force that needs to be applied on the plate to maintain this motion. So to maintain the motion of one meter per second of this plate of this center plate, how much force is required? That we want to find out. This force we want to find out. Now you can observe over this plate one fluid is there. and below this plate also fluid is there okay in this case the fluid is same but there may be the question like this upper fluid is different this lower fluid is different now try to see how to solve this so force applied uh, on this plate is because of force acting on upper side plus force acting on the lower side and these forces we can find out by using newton's law of viscosity now newton's law of viscosity is tau that is equal to mu du by dy and tau that is equal to force upon area first we will consider the upper plate the upper side so force on the upper side of the plate divided by area that is equal to mu du by dy let's put the values force on the upper side we don't know area area of this plate it is given 20 by 20 cm if i convert that into meter it is 0.2 meter by 0.2 meter so that is ultimately 0.04 meter square this is the area of the plate so area is 0.04 mu is uh, uh, dynamic viscosity in both the cases the fluid is same on upper side as well as lower side and that uh, viscosity is given as 0.027 pascal second if it is given in poise you have to convert that into pascal second then change in velocity we can see the top wall that is fixed top wall is fixed and uh, this uh, middle plate is moving with velocity 1 meter per second so difference between these two velocities is 1 meter per second right so this is not moving and this has velocity 1 meter per second so difference is 1 meter per second only so that is du and dy is distance between these two dy in the upper case is 1 mm okay so that i am converting into meter So one into ten raised to minus three. So by using this, we can find out uh, the force on the upper side of this plate. So force on the upper side of this plate is one point zero eight newton. This is the force on the upper side of the plate. Now similarly, we have to find out force on the lower side of the plate. So force on the lower side of the plate is we can find out by using Newton's law of viscosity. so force on the lower plate divided by area is same area of the plate is same viscosity again the fluid is same so that's why the viscosity is again same the change in velocity the velocity of this plate is 1 meter per second that is acting towards the right and the velocity on the uh, of the moving wall is 0.3 meter per second but it is towards the left okay so that we can consider as minus so du means change in velocity that is u2 minus u1 and in this case u2 as 1 meter per second minus u1 as minus 0.3 okay so ultimately it is like this 1 minus 0 minus of 0.3 divided by dy dy is 2.6 into 10 raised to minus 3 so we can do this calculation so fl is 0.04 Into zero point zero two seven into one plus zero point three. That is one point three divided by two point six into ten raised to minus three. We can do this calculation. So this value we are getting as zero point five four newton. So we can find out what is the total force. So this is the force on the lower side of the plate, and this is the force on the upper side of the plate. So addition of these two, that is nothing but total force. So that is 1.08 newton plus 0.54 newton. So direct total force is uh, 1.62 newton. So that is your final answer. So the question is, the clutch system shown in figure is used to transmit torque through a 2 mm thick oil film with viscosity 0.38 newton second per meter square between two identical 30 cm diameter discs 
when the driving shaft rotates at at a speed of 1200 rpm the driven shaft is observed to rotate at 1125 rpm assuming a linear velocity profile for the oil film determine the transmitted torque this is the question so try to understand the question so there is one uh, driving shaft you can see so this is driving shaft and this one is driven shaft and in between these two shaft this is the oil whose viscosity is given viscosity of of this oil is 0.38 newton second per meter square this is in si units so no need to do any conversion and thickness of this oil film is 2 mm and since it is a driving shaft so let's uh, assume that this uh, shaft is rotating in this direction and because of oil in between these two this shaft is also rotated in this same direction since the oil is uh, oil is there in between these two shafts there is some loss okay and we want to find out how much torque is transmitted by this driving shaft to the driven shaft that we want to find out now see the velocity uh, inside this oil is changing along the radius also see the velocity is changing like this it is changing along this thickness also so from the driving shaft to the driven shaft the the velocity is changing and along the radius also the velocity is changing so at this point the velocity is different 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 because of this we are not able to find out the answer directly so what we will do we will consider a small elemental thickness first we will try to find out what is the force on this elemental thickness and then by using that we will try to find out what is the torque on this elemental thickness and then by using that torque we will try to find out what is the torque on entire this uh, fluid layer okay so i am considering one uh, elemental uh, layer like this it has a thickness uh, dr and it is at a radius r from the center first we will try to find out what is the force and what is the torque on this elemental area okay so force on this elemental area we can find out with the relation of shear stress so shear stress is force upon area since it is applied to the elemental area so that's why i'm writing in terms of df by da so by using this we can write df as tau into da we know the newton's law of viscosity so that uh, that says that shear stress is equal to mu into du by dy so that value i'm putting here so it is mu into du by dy into elemental area that is 2 pi r into dr okay so this elemental area da is 2 pi r into dr so this is my uh, force on the elemental area now uh, let's talk about the velocity now we know that du means change in velocity so we can write it is as u2 minus u1 since the since it is rotating so we want to find out linear velocity so linear velocity is u2 and uh, uh, for the other shaft linear velocity is u1 so this u2 we can write as r into omega 2 and this u1 we can write as r into omega 1 okay this is the velocity of this elemental strip on this side on the driving shaft side and on the driven shaft side okay so on the driving shaft side the velocity is r omega 2 linear velocity and on the driven shaft the linear velocity is r omega 1 okay so the difference between these two that is nothing but your du so that value i am putting here so ultimately this equation is mu into r i am taking as common omega 2 minus omega 1 upon dy dy is nothing but the distance between these two shafts let us consider the distance between these two shaft is indicated by small t instead of dy so t is the distance between these two shafts and our area that is 2 pi r into dr try to rearrange these terms so it is 2 pi mu r square omega 2 minus omega 1 upon t into dr this is nothing but df so this is just a force on the elemental area we want to find out torque so we know that uh, torque is force into radius so torque on the elemental area that's why i'm writing dt so it is equal to df into r so this term multiply by r so we can write dt as 2 pi mu r cube because uh, this r square is there and one more r this r will be there 
सो इट इज आर क्यूब ओमेगा टू माइनस ओमेगा वन डिवाइड बाय टी इन टू डी आर दिस इज नथिंग बट टॉर्क दिस इज द टॉर्क ऑन द इलेमेंटल एरिया वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट टॉर्क ऑन द एंटायर फ्लूड लेयर फॉर दैट वी हैव टू डू द इंटीग्रेशन सो वी विल डू द इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ दिस टर्म सो इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ डी टी लिमिट इज जीरो टू टी एंड इंटीग्रेशन ऑफ दिस टर्म लिमिट इज जीरो टू आर कैपिटल आर कैपिटल आर इज रेडियस दिस रेडियस ओके सो ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड वी कैन टेक दिस टू पाए म्यू आउटसाइड सो इस टर्म वी कैन टेक आउटसाइड लाइक लुक एट दिस टर्म्स सो टू पाए म्यू देन ओमेगा टू माइनस ओमेगा वन एंड टी सिंस दिस टर्म्स आर नॉट डिपेंडेंट ऑन द आर सो दैट्स वाई वी कैन टेक दिस आउटसाइड सो इन साइड द इंटीग्रेशन इट इज ओनली द आर क्यूब एंड डी आर and left hand side as it is so we'll do the integration so on left hand side it is a t limits are 0 to t and on the right hand side this term is as it is and integration of r cube is r raised to 4 divided by 4 limits are 0 to r i'm putting the values so uh, on the left hand side it is t and on the right hand side it is so i'm putting the limits so it is r raised to 4 divided by 4 so this two this uh, we can divide like this we can convert like this so instead of r we can put as d so we know that r is equal to d by 2 so if i put that value the equation will be like this so t is equal to pi mu omega 2 minus omega 1 d raised to 4 divide by 32t so this is my final equation okay so this uh, equation i got now just have to put the values now, by using the values i can get the final uh, value of the torque so we for that we need the angular velocities omega 2 and omega 1 so omega 2 i can find out as 2 pi N two divided by sixty. I'm putting the values two pi N two is one thousand two hundred divided by sixty. So this value I'm getting omega two as one twenty five point sixty six radian per second. Likewise, I can find out omega one also. So it is two pi N one divided by sixty. Again, uh, I'll put the values. I'm directly writing the uh, final value. So it is one one seven point eighty one. radian per second remember we are assuming that the driving shaft and driven shaft both are rotating in the same direction so if i consider the driving shaft is rotating in this direction the driven shaft is also rotating in this direction that's why i'm getting the minus sign here if it is rotating in opposite direction then instead of minus there will be the positive sign okay so just put this values so pi mu is 0.38 then omega 2 is 125.66 and omega 1 is 117.81 diameter is 0.3 raised to 4 divided by 32 and thickness is 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 so finally the value of torque i am getting as 1.186 Newton meter. So this is my final answer.